Welcome, dear viewer, to uh, the introduction to Rails. So I'm just going to quickly run through the way that I set up Rails applications locally and some of the things that you might think about as you're getting started. So the very first one is prerequisites. So your computer must have a couple things installed, applications that you're going to need installed. One of them is Ruby. You can check if that is installed. I've opened iTerm2 here. That's the terminal application I use. but um, if you're on a Mac, you can just type terminal and open that. There are also instructions for Windows, but I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not a, us a window user, and this this guide is going to sort of assume that you're using Mac. Um, sorry, but you should also be able to follow along, um, as the commands are going to be the same. But um, yeah, the the like sort of assumption is that we will be working from Mac. So we want to check that we have Ruby installed. You can do so by saying Ruby V. This tells me that I have. Uh, you know, 2.6.3, Ruby version 2.6.3, that's great. Um, we're also going to need Node. So I'm going to say Node-V. That'll tell me which Node version I'm running. By default, if you use the default settings, then when you uh, set up a Rails application, the database that it uses is SQLite uh, or SQLite 3. So if you have SQLite, um, SQLite 3, then you can just like run SQLite 3 in the terminal and that will print out the version. Personally, I prefer Postgres, um, which you can download. It's also another free open source um, database management system that you can download. So check that out. Uh, the latest versions of Rails, so uh, as of this recording, I think it's version 6, then you will also want Yarn installed. So you can say Yarn. Uh, and that's actually yarn, let's see, yarn dash V. Uh, okay, so the yarn dash V will tell you the version. I've got 1.17.3. Um, so that's how you check your dependencies. Now, in order to install uh, the command, so Rails, typing Rails, that is a command that lets you run Rails specific things that help you generate and scaffold and set up stuff. So in order to have the Rails command available, you must first install the Rails gem. So you can say gem install Rails, and that will install the Rails gem. Now, depending on your system, you may also need to update your environment path, your path to, um, so, so that when, uh, when you go to type a command, uh, you wanna make sure that the Rails command is available in um, at, at like any in any directory in your machine and the way that you do that is by setting up your path So if you type which rails this will tell you where the rails executable lives And so by saying which that you can say which uh, any any command and it'll tell you like where it's um, where it's Available like which brew right like homebrew is installed here rails is a ruby gem that is installed um, and I'm using rbenv as my Ruby environment manager or my Ruby version manager. Um, so when I type which Rails, it tells me the path, the full path to where the executable is. This, this like the stuff before Rails here is in my, um, in my path. I'm not gonna export or I'm not gonna print it out right now, but those are some things that you'll need when you're getting started. Now, in order to create a new Rails application, you say Rails new and then the name of your app so in this uh, example, I'm going to say um, models demo. And then there's a ton of different arguments that you can pass. So you can specify which database you want to use and um, whether or not you want to use tests and whether or not you want to use um, this thing called turbo links, uh, whether or not you want to use the listen gem. So um, by default, you can just say Rails new and that will fire up a very basic Rails application. I prefer to use Postgres locally and also when I deploy. Um, I, I prefer to deploy to Heroku, and so in future guides I'll likely walk through how to deploy your Rails application to Heroku. Um, Heroku, I don't know if it runs SQLite, but it definitely runs Postgres, and there's a lot of really helpful things that you get from Postgres, like support for JSON and geo searching, and there's just a bunch of reasons why Postgres is incredible. You should totally use it. Um, I have Postgres.app installed, and so then you'll have like a little um, elephant in the top bar, which will tell you which version of Postgres you have running. So I'm running PostgreSQL 12. And when I initialize this new Rails application, I want to pass dash dash database equals post 
Postgres QL. Um, so it's not like Postgres SQL, it's Postgres and then QL at the end. Uh, that's, that's tripped me up before. So uh, generally I will also do dash T because by default Rails is gonna come with um, a testing framework called Minitest. Uh, by passing dash T I'm saying don't install the test framework because if I'm going to write tests, which I do in any production application, I don't want to write them in Minitest. I prefer to write them with RSpec, which is another testing library. Um, so here I would generally pass dash T to skip tests. And those are the only options that I'm going to go over today. So this takes a little while. It goes through, creates a bunch of files and folders and is scaffolding out all of the different gems and installing the dependencies in order to run a local version of Rails. So we, hear, we see like a bunch of different gems here, uh, like we can go through them or you can go through them and kind of like dig through and read about what, which, what each of them do. But this is like uh, a gem for internationalization. It looks like many tests did get installed. Uh, active support. There's, this is a library of tons of helpful things that are added on top of the Ruby language that are um, you know, exposed as helper methods and things. Uh, we've got uh, Bundler and eRuby. Um, there's, you know, Nokogiri is a very common gem for working with XML, but also helpful for like parsing HTML and things. Uh, they've, you know, we've got Action View, a set of tools for rendering your HTML views, Rack, Rack Test. Uh, there's just a ton of really helpful gems that come out of the box. So it's also in installing Bootsnap and Bybug as a debugger. Um, JBuilder is a thing for, you know, rendering JSON. Uh, back to the, the client. So really it is like a full batteries included uh, web framework. And that's one of the reasons why I really like working with it is uh, it gives you just so much out of the box. So after you've run that command, Rails new, we called our application here uh, models demo. You can name it whatever you want. I would, I would recommend against naming it application. That's like the one thing I wouldn't name it because that'll get really confusing. And I've seen some really interesting errors when uh, an, a Rails app is named application. Okay, so after you've done that, I will create a new directory called uh, the name of your app. So now we can CD into models demo, and we have now we have a full Rails application right here. And um, starting from the very beginning, we can say Rails server. So again, we're using the Rails command, and this time we're passing it a subcommand server. Now, this crashed and did not start up because it says Webpacker configuration files not found. Uh, no such file or folder. Please run Rails Webpacker install. Okay, so it's telling us in the error message exactly how to fix it. So we're gonna run that. Rails Webpacker colon install. And then it says Webpacker requires node um, greater than 10.17.0. And remember that when I said node V, it was printing out 10.16. So it, uh, I can, now say which node, and that will tell me where node is installed. Again, it's similar to rbenv, but this one is nodeenv, and uh, it tells me where node is installed. And with nodeenv, I can actually say um, nodeenv, and that should allow me to see the list of commands. I'm gonna say nodeenv, um, versions to see the list of installed versions. I have a few versions installed. 10.16 is the default that's on my machine, but I do have 10.17. So I can say node env um, local, and that says set the local node version for this directory to, and then I can pass it a version. So I'll just say 10.17.0 as that was the, the minimum required. Then I will rerun Rails Webpacker colon install. Um, and now that I have my local node env version set at <laughs> the minimum version in order to uh, to run Webpacker. This should work fine. Okay, so this is installing some more dependencies similar to those gems that were installed. Now we're pulling down some JavaScript modules for SAS and for handling uh, a whole bunch of different things on the front end that come with Rails out of the box. So here's just a whole bunch of different uh, node modules that are being installed. Okay, all right, that looks like it, it went fine. All right, let's try this Rails server command again. And okay, so it says is booting Puma. Puma is the name 
of the, the web server that we're gonna use. Um, that is like the Ruby gem for actually serving the application. You can configure it to use a number of different web servers. Uh, Puma is just one of several. And down here we see that the, this is the, the version of Puma that's running. We see a whole bunch of information, but the thing that's really cool is that now the server is listening on port 3000 on localhost. So we can copy this and open it in the web browser. And in the web browser, we actually see right off the bat, we see an error and it says active record error, no database. Database models underscore demo underscore development does not exist. That's because when we started the application, we hadn't actually created the database, which is required in order to run the application. So I'm gonna come back to the terminal and use control C to stop the server from running. And I'm gonna say uh, rails db colon create. Previously, this was rake db create. Rake is another tool for like writing some local tasks. So now that we have run rails db create, we can rerun rails server. And any of these rails commands, we can actually shorten to whatever the, the, the shortest prefix that uniquely identifies the command is. So we'll go back to the browser. We're still at localhost 3000. Refresh the page and yay, you're on rails. So now we have, um, a, the foundation for a working Rails application. So that is, uh, that's how you get started. And then in the next episode, we'll talk about models.